So I was on the internet recently and I decided to do some rather interesting research. Anyway, I then decided to jump over onto everyone's least favourite selling platform, eBay. I wanted to revisit something that I've done previously on the channel, budget cameras. Now the last time I did a video about budget cameras, I ended up buying a Nikon D70 and I found it was actually okay. If you're on like the most strict kind of budget, this might be a good entryway into getting into photography. However, I wanted to revisit the idea because DSLR cameras are a bit like dinosaurs now. They're going a bit extinct. Camera manufacturers are not focusing on making new bodies, making new lenses, and eventually they're gonna die out and mirrorless is the way forward. So I wanted to challenge myself to buy a mirrorless camera for less than hundred pounds. Now I didn't think it was gonna be possible. I thought it was a really difficult task to do so. I thought there was no way I could buy a mirrorless camera for less than a hundred pounds. And I was kind of right. I couldn't do it for less than a hundred pounds. I could do it for less than 50. So the camera that I bought was the Sony NEX C3. Sounds like I'm playing a game of like battleships. NEX C3. So this camera was listed on eBay for 45 pounds, but it was listed as spares and repairs. So I offered the guy 40 pounds for it. He accepted. When it arrived, it arrived in a plastic bag, which I was a little bit like, ooh, static and all that, with the sensor exposed and the sensor had a mighty big mark on it, but I gave it a sensor clean. It cleaned up, so that was good. I then plopped in an A6400 battery, which are compatible with this, which is pretty awesome. And then uh, threw in a memory card, and to my, the light of the lights, look at that, it really works. Now, before we dive into the specs that are contained within this absolute mighty weapon, there is something we have to address. It's size, it's tiny, and yes, we are talking about the camera. Look how small it is, it's so cute. Look at it, it is quintessentially a pocket camera. Look, you could just plop it straight in there. There you go, I mean, yeah, you don't have a lens on it, but you know, it's kind of handy, you know? You gotta make these plus points where you can with old cameras like this, because there ain't many. Do you wanna see something really ridiculous, right? Here we go, Sony NEX, save it to 200, <laughs> Mark II. And yes, it's got the E-mount, so all these lenses are compatible. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is the epitome of cheap camera, expensive lens. Look at that. That looks ridiculous. Now, this camera was released back in 2011, so it was back in the days where camera manufacturers were making mirrorless cameras and trying to make, uh, make them as small as possible to compete with like massive DSLR cameras before reverting to type and making mirrorless cameras just as big as DSLR cameras. Look how ridiculous that looks. That is jokes. I was born in the city, I was raised on its edges. My pop work is life when it's gone box. I found love in its center. If I could live here forever, think it'd be for the better. I love the weather, even though it's fog 24-7. I love the people. This is city. I met all my best friends. And I wanna thank every break. I wanna thank every entrance to every building that I step in in this city of mine. Oh, you most my best moments in life. See, I fell in love for the first time in Golden Gate Park. I saw my first rap show at Great American Hall. I used what to is rather British? isn't it i have literally just arrived in york and um started to rain well it doesn't matter the show must go on this camera has no weather sealing there's a little bit of fun fact for you and um yeah we're in manual mode and uh, i think this thing is ready to go i'm with the kit lens at the moment i might switch to the 50 a little bit uh later on but we need to go through the specs oh shit would you mind if i like Hold you the specs of the camera whilst huddled in a corner in a fetal position. I mean, I know that sounds like a combination of words you don't want to hear, but it is raining. I'm going to try my worst voiceover voice possible for this next bit whilst I'm huddled in the corner. The Sony NEX C3 has 16 megapixels on an APS-C sensor. Kind of impressive that they've been able to jam such a big sensor in such a tiny body. It has an autofocus system of 25 point contrast detect AF system. We have an ISO range that weirdly starts at 200 and ends at 12,800, aka Swiss cheese mode.
With this camera as well, you also get some video specs, and they're quite terrible. You get 720p at a maximum of 30 FPS. This is a camera from 2011. How they couldn't even fit 1080 in this thing is beyond me, but also just shows how far technology has come on. You know, we get 4K in our phones, and we couldn't even get like 1080 in a little camera like this 10 years ago. Uh, so yeah, for video, don't even bother. Also, you might be wondering why the audio is so bad. It doesn't have a mic port, so this is the best the audio can be on this camera. It probably looks quite terrible as well, because I can't actually control any of the manual settings, even though I am in manual mode. So it's doing it all itself, and it's probably doing it really poorly. But let's be real here, nobody is buying this little camera for video. That would be idiotic. That would be like buying a Ferrari and wanting to do a demolition derby with it. Let's address the ergonomics of this camera. They are awful. Yes, it might be small, it might be compact, but like this grip it feels awful and it feels like really slippery as well it reminds me of a fuji camera like i'm sorry if there's any fuji like users who watch my channel when i'm really offended by that but you get what i'm going at like look at it there's just nothing to hold on to like how do you not just constantly drop your camera the other one is the menu system now of course this being a sony camera this is pure tradition that it is a confusing bundle of joy and mess so for example, uh, here's a prime one. The brightness, I don't know if this is gonna show in the sunlight, the brightness and the color right here. You'd expect that to be like referring to like the mint. That woman got right off my grill, did you see that? She was like taking no shits. I tell you what, if you gave this camera back to the person who made the menu system for it, even they would be confused at where certain parameters and settings are for the camera. It is just that much of a mess. It is wonderful. So far, all the photography that I have done with this camera has been shot with manual mode. Now, the ISO is really janky to change quickly, but because it probably has a really bad ISO performance with it being only a range of 200 to 12,800 and keeping the ISO at a base of 200. So I'm only changing the aperture and shutter speed, but even then there is no obviously dedicated button for them. So what you could do is So what you have to do is press the down button here and you can adjust the shutter speed like so then press OK and then press it down again and that will allow you to change the aperture. So I want to quickly talk about the display of this camera as well. The display of this camera is not very good. Now that is also because I don't know how well you can tell um, but you might be able to tell that the screen on it looks completely knackered. I think that's a screen protector but I have not been able to take it off and I don't want to like crack the screen in case it is actually the screen itself that is all scratched and manky. But it is making images really hard to see. But what is making it even worse is I take a photograph, right? And it looks correctly exposed. Like for me, the highlights look perfect. I like the dramaticness of it. Take the photograph and then when I have a look at the photograph, I don't know if you can see this, the highlights are completely, it seems to be, blown out now that might just be the display the monitor might be set to a too high a brightness but it doesn't give me too much confidence in the photographs that i'm taking because i've shot them correctly exposed but they're saying that the highlights are completely overexposed currently outside york minster i've switched from the kit lens to the 50 f1.8 i want to get that f1.8 aperture even though it will be on an aps-c sensor which means this won't be a 50 mm lens it will be a 75 mm lens but nevertheless i think with all the umbrellas all the reflections this combo should get some pretty decent results all right mate how you doing too bad you yeah not bad all right so this is my mate duncan he's going to be helping me film some b-roll for this video using this my new camera this is a solid upgrade it's great in it 40 quid. That is but better than mine. Do you know what? I'm going to replace the R5 with this, I think. There you go. Canon R5 is going to switch to the Sony NEX same three. It's got more megapixels than that. I know. This only has 12 megapixels, this Sony A7S3 I'm filming on. I'm going to see if I get snapped. 
Oh, the focus it on it is focus. so... The focus also, I am discovering, is super janky. It doesn't work. No, it's super <laughs> janky with the 50mm lens. It's a little bit better with the kit lens, but that thing, forget it, you can't. Final verdict then on the Sony NEX C3. It's shit. Sorry for completely wasting your time. This video has literally been 90% cocking around with a cheap camera to see what kind of photography I can get and laugh at its many foibles and 10% consumer advice. And the net result from that is don't buy it. Now don't get me wrong, this camera did take all those photographs, but the process of taking the photographs was a pain in the backside with the constant hunting with the focus, with the menu system, with the photos being overexposed when I thought they were correctly exposed. It's just not a really good package to recommend, even if you are on the tightest of budget. It's interesting that I've not recommended this, but last time I actually recommended a Nikon D70, and that was really because I feel like the Nikon D70 was a more refined camera. When that was released, it was released as a professional camera. When this thing was released, it was released not in the intention of being used by professionals. So it can really be no surprise then that it can't really do professional kind of jobs. Okay, so here's some actual consumer advice. If you are looking to get into photography, just use your phone. Most phones these days will take amazing photographs and get into the pro mode. Grab yourself a variable ND filter and you'll be set on your way. And then if you are looking at getting into photography, save as much money as you can. If you're really gonna take it seriously, have a look. Personally, I would have a look at the A6000 series of cameras. The A6000 is a great camera. I have the A6400. It also, of course, depends on your budget and how far you can stretch yourself. So it's just a case of looking into the market and seeing what's gonna suit you best. So yeah, that's all I can really say and that's all I can really offer. Sorry for completely wasting your time. I know you could have been doing a lot better things than watching this video, but if you have made it to the end, I really do appreciate it. And if you wanna see more cheap camera challenges in the future, let me know in the comment section below. And if you did somehow like today's video, make sure you hit the like button and maybe subscribe to the channel. Is that too much to ask? Probably turn on the bell icon so you're notified whenever I release a new video. Anyway, I'm gonna stop pestering you guys. I'm gonna let you get on with your evening and I'm gonna throw this in the trash. Later.